Hey, it's Fit Gear Hunter, and up for review today is the Polar Verity Sense. This is a full review as well as an in-depth analysis of the heart rate accuracy, specifically for CrossFit and high-intensity interval training. As we always say, Fit Gear Hunter channel and the website associated with it is all dedicated to tracking devices for the purpose of CrossFit training and high-intensity interval training versus all the running, biking, and swimming videos that are out there. So what we're going to talk about today is a breakdown. So if you like it, please give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing for more. And what I'm about to tell you is awesome about the Polar Verity Sense and its accuracy specifically for tracking CrossFit training. CrossFit training, it, it has a lot of peaks and valleys in heart rate. It, it's difficult to keep up with the fluctuation of heart rate amongst many optical heart rate sensors. And oftentimes you have to wear a chest strap. So we're going to look at today is can the Polar Verity Sense as an armband optical heart rate tracker keep up with CrossFit intensity training programs. So what we're going to look at in just general summary form, we're going to do a deep dive or just an overview of the specs. We're going to look at a hands-on of the device itself. And then we're going to talk about the accuracy of the heart rate tracking when compared to a chest strap. So let's dive into the super boring details as you'll see in a many, million other reviews. It's $90. You can wear it on the forearm, the bicep. It has a little temple tracking where you can track it to swim goggles. The difference between this and the OH1 is a few different high level benefits. So number one, it's got 20 hours of battery life versus 12 hours of, hours of battery life over the OH1. So that's about a one and a half times or over one and a half times increase. It's got 150 signal meter difference. So 150 meter signal uh, distance you can go away from your tracking device. So that's 75, that's twice as much over the OH1 Plus or the OH1. And it's got 16 megabytes of memory. So that's 12 megabytes more. So it's just four megabytes on the OH1, which is four times more on the Verity Sense. So that means you can track 600 hours of training without it losing the beat for those, you know, the training things. It's got six LED optical heart rate sensor. It's water resistant to 50 meters. It can com communicate uh, concurrently to two Bluetooth devices and endless Ant Plus devices. And it's got a myriad of sensors in there. We're not gonna test it for the swimming capabilities, but actually not just the optical heart rate built into it, but it's got an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnometer. If I even said that right, magnetometer. But uh, it's for tracking swimming. You enter your pool distance and it'll tell you how many laps you took because it can tell when you're changing directions in the pool while you're wearing it on the special goggle. So we'll look at what's all included. So let's dive in and look at the hands-on of the Verity Sense. All right, so these are the things that come with it. Um, obviously, or not obviously, there is a new baggie. I do think this is great for all these little tiny pieces. You have a little baggie that's Polar branded that you can carry all your junk in. That's super helpful from the OH one with just all these things floating around or put in a Ziploc plastic bag. So what do we have? Obviously we have the strap itself. We'll look at that in a second. You can see that the there's a metal ring on the inside of this one. This one is one that can strap into goggles. This helps you with your transmission distance. Um, as we'll see in a second, you have another simple temple strap where you snap it in and you can strap it again on some goggles. And then this is a similar design. I think it's just trying to accomplish the same basic thing, just a little bit more narrow. So this is the charging puck or the charging, um, that's not a cord, charging piece. You snap it in place, you use a Bluetooth connector and you're off to the races with charging it. And this is the coup de grace. This is the new strap design. You can see that it's got the sort of o, the H10 uh, chest strap and they have, usually have higher qualities on the H10 versus the H9. Um, H10 sort of chest strap, you know, stretchy material. It's got a fixed connection here, but it's got this new plastic ha uh, holder. This is where it straps in, and this plastic holder does incredibly well. It actually holds it really well in place. So if you were to compare it to the OH-1, you can see, the again, the material is a little bit more flimsy. You Obviously, if you look at it across, the material is actually thinner than the device itself. So what happens is when you have it on your arm, it creates like a flippy, you know, a more flimsy feeling of connection and the material itself just doesn't feel quite as nice. So here they have it where it just locks in place with this plastic piece here. If you want to remove the device, you basically pop it out and you plug and charge it or put it in one of the other connecting things if you wanna wear it on goggles or wear it somewhere else on your temple. But it just snaps right in place 
and you're off to the races. I really like the fabric and feel. It is definitely an upgraded feel to it. And how does the device work? How do you make it work? So there's three basic ways or modes of methods that you can use it as a tracker. So it's got the heart there. That's just for pure heart rate transmission. So you turn this on and it's now just tracking your heart rate. Then you link it or you link it at some point to a device, whether it's to a watch or to a computer or to a, a bike, whatever it is, basically all this is doing is transmitting the signal to whatever paired device you have. It's not starting or stopping anything. So you're basically going to start your workout on the device and end your workout on the device. All it's doing is taking information from this and it's doing all the saving and the analytics on the device itself, whether you're connected to a Garmin or a Koros or a Sunto or a Polar Watch or any other device itself, you know, the training analytics are to come from whatever that device is providing. So you can connect this to a Garmin, you can get all of Garmin's training analytics, all it's doing is sending the heart rate signal to the device. Secondly, you can store it. So this little downward arrow here is where you just can store your workout and sync it with Polar Flow and sync it with Polar Beat so that you can have your workout analysis done there. It can store 600 hours. That's a crazy amount of storage on this little tiny thing. And obviously the battery life is only 20 hours. So you, you know, you could store way more than the battery life itself. And the last is the, the swimming. So that actually engages a lot of the sensors. So the accelerometer and the gyroscope to about a turn, determine when you're turning around in the pool. We didn't test any of those things, but that's what that tracking engages. And the way you do it, simply you hold it and turn it on. It's going to flash a light um, at the first signal option. So just heart rate transmission and you have a little blue light there and then you can push the button once and this is saying, okay, do you want to save your workout on the device itself? You have a green light and you can go to the pool mode, which has more of a white light. So depending on what you choose, it's just waiting for you to leave it sitting there on one of these metrics long enough to be able to save it. And so it starts to ask, you know, by going in a circle, if this is what you want and then no, is that what you want? It'll start to flash. It's saying, it's about to say, I'm about to engage in that method or that mode. So let's just do it on the, on the save feature. So it'll, and boom, you're off. So at this point, it is recording a workout on this device itself, and it's strange, and it made me feel nervous the first couple of times, but the way you save the workout is just turn the thing off. So you hold the device down for a period of time, and eventually the device goes off, and it starts communicating with the app. It starts communicating with your phone, or when you come back into Signal, it communicates with the phone, and it sends the workout summary to the phone itself. There are times where I have turned it on, and the phone is nearby and sitting on the Polar um, Flow app, and it'll look for any new data. It'll just basically, you'll see it, you know, start to um, pull in any data that might be missing, but that's all it is to this little device. But the new design makes it a significant difference in the actual experience of wearing it on your arm and the feel and fit. Let's come back together. Okay, so what do we see in the form factor changes? There's actually no changes to the physical size. It's the exact same physical size as the OH1, the OH1 Plus, because it fits in the same battery um, in the same rechargeable clip. But what are the primary changes are the things around it? Obviously, the changes are the amount of storage you can, you can put on there, the amount of hours it can last, and obviously the distance you can go away from your device and it'll still stay connected. 150 meters is a great distance. But the biggest thing is the strap. To me, that is one of the absolute best things that's changed about the device. We'll look at a second at the heart rate accuracy because the original OH1, OH1 Plus was coming in at 96 to 98% accurate. And I, you know, that is an excellent accuracy, but it's obviously not perfect. But the biggest thing being the strap is a huge differentiator because of how it affect, affects things. So if you look, when you have the OH1, you would uh, it would sometimes it would flop like that. It would easily, when you put it on, it just felt really floppy and the strap feels more, more flimsy. So the Verity Sense, you could smack it all day long and it's not going to come off. And that is a huge differentiator for me and I think for just doing CrossFit as a general activity and a general sport. Because when you're in CrossFit, you're doing a lot of transitions, a lot of changes, there's a lot of movements, and you don't want to have to clip something and then go fix it or go worry about it at any level, weight, shape, or form. Plus, it's just that mental drain of having to be mindful that you have, and when you're burning out and you're deep in a pain cave, it's just a pain to have to think about a device on your arm just so you have it. So 
What we're going to look at is obviously the accuracy now, and that is one of the most primary things. You know, when we did, and I did, a, you know, the testing over a couple of weeks, I tested it over like 15 different workouts. I did the analysis on 10 workouts. Just one thing to note, I tested it and there was three times where because I think I'm testing so many devices and I was actually testing the H10 or I was comparing it to the H10 connected to the Vantage V2 or the H10 connected to the M2, the Vantage M2, um, I lost three workouts. They just didn't ever sync. They didn't ever appear on the Polar Flow. And as much as I went back and forth, they just didn't appear. So, I, you know, I don't know what that is. But either way, I think that's because I'm testing multiple devices. And I'm typically, at the time, I was running four or five different devices for testing. So, looking at the accuracy, how did we track it? Obviously, everything was to the H10 is the sort of gold standard. And I tracked it in four categories. One was the average heart rate. That's a little bit easier. A lot of watches are somewhat in line with the average heart rate from compared to a chest strap, but we chopped off the bottom 100 beats per minute. So we're looking at the percentage accuracy of 100 beats and over for the average heart rate. Secondly, the zone five, the absolute peak zone of your heart rate. So you have your max heart rate and anything in the 90 to 100% beats per minute, how much did it track accuracy there? How much percentage accurate was it? And then the zone four and five, the 80 to 100 beats per minute. So the top, top zones on both of those categorizations to see, is it picking up the intensity? Plus CrossFit, you have all these fluctuations in heart rate. Can it capture the flow, the, the changes over time, as well as the peak highest level of heart rate? And then last, because it's a polar device, I'm comparing the cardio load output compared to the cardio load output, and that's the evaluation of the exertion of the workout. Obviously, because I can use a Polar H10 and I have this, I'm gonna be able to get clear and accurate results when it compares to what is flowing into the training load to evaluate how hard you've been pressing, pushing it, this week versus past weeks. Obviously, the training load calculation is because I own a Polar watch that comes with training load. If you just bought either of these, the H10 chest strap and you connected it to Polar B or the Verity Sense and you connected it, you're not gonna get the training calculation assessment. You're just gonna get heart rate tracking. But because I own a Polar device, I can actually get the training assessment or the load assessment for the workouts themselves and compare it head to head. So let's look at the statistics and the numbers across a number of workouts now and come back together. Okay, so what we're looking at in all these, you know, we're gonna go through a series of these. We're not gonna go through all of them. We'll see at first, you know, the Verity Sense. What did it get in that top right corner, the average heart rate, and then what was the training load assessed? So again, 150, 103, 151 off of a chest strap, and that's the H10, and 102 on the bottom right. 148, and then 68 on the training load, 149 beat per minute average, and 70 on the chest strap. On the Verity, 138 beats per minute average, 84 load, 139 beats per minute average, 85 load. So coming in really accurate. And then that's just the series of workouts as it compares one to the other. And then you also have, how does it compare just on the peak zone five and the peak zone four and five. But if you just look at the peak zone five, this is the Verity at 1826. This is the chest strap 1828. That is ultra high level. You can see the heart rate actually peaked above 176 beats per minute at different points. So it is keeping up with the intensity of the workout. Here's another one, 1420 for the Verity on the zone five, 1416 on the chest strap. So that, I mean, all these numbers are coming in really well. So how does it look in a full graph form when you track specs? So obviously in past videos where I've done heart rate analysis sort of accuracy testing, I always have colors. So if it's green, then it's an A rated, you know, 90% or above, and there's a bunch of other colors for other ratings, um, A, you know, B, C, D, F. So you can see it's all green across the board. The average heart rate, lots of high 90s and hundreds. The cardio load comparison for what would flow if you were just using this and pairing it to, you know, the Vantage V2 or the M2 or one of the other Polar watches, and you wanted to make sure that this was giving you accurate information for your training load over time. You see it's all like upper, upper, upper 90s and 100. The zone five, this is incredibly good results for tracking that peak, 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 90 to 100% of your heart rate maximum, and then the zone four and five together, highly accurate there. So when you look at the summary of things, this is sort of the weighting on the bottom for how much I gave to each area. The average heart rate is not as significant. The load is a significant tracker in the zone five. That highest level heart rate is significant. And then the zone four and five has um, a double weight to the average heart rate. And what did it get? And you can see across the board, these are high level accuracy numbers. 
a final score of 99.3. So 99.3% accurate when taking it across all these different measures at different weights in the calculation. That is highly accurate. Let's come back together. So what do I think overall? I think this is an awesome solution. When you think of chest straps, a lot of people don't like the, the way it feels to wear a chest strap. And even just when you're doing different CrossFit movements, like you're doing a lot of burpees, you're coming down against a chest strap. I did a burpee workout the other day on asphalt and it just felt like I was gonna break it in half. Um, and then if you, you know, as you're doing barbell movements, the bar path, sometimes if you're running, pulling the bar close to your chest, it'll clip my chest, you know, the chest strap and pop it off on the H10 because it comes off. So those are obvious issues. Now I like the chest strap because it is the ultimate level of accuracy, but this is an actual solution you can use on a regular basis because it's 99.3% accurate. That's pretty much capturing everything you would want to capture to properly assess your training load or your, you know, your training assessment or the intensity of the workout. So it's picking up all the peaks and valleys, all the high marks. It's following the flow of everything and you can connect it to any watch and you can just, you know, obviously now the new strap is not flopping around. It doesn't feel flimsy. It feels solid. You don't have to think about it. You can just start it and go. And the way it works in just connecting it to a regular, if you want to compare it to a chest strap, you basically pair it with your watch, whether it's Garmin or Apple or Koros or Suunto or any other watch that has Bluetooth connectivity or Ant Plus connectivity and allows you to pair with an external heart rate sensor. You just, you know, go search for it. You find it and sync it up. And then you're off to the races. You put the device on, you start the workout on the watch and you can throw the watch off to the side and go 150 meter meter radius i wouldn't push the upper echelon of that but you can go a great distance away from your device and run your whole workout throughout the box and actually be tracking accuracy off the bicep without having to physically wear a watch so whether you're wearing wrist straps or hand wraps you're not going to have any problems and you'll get the same heart rate analytics on top of that, if you don't like Polar's watch systems, you can use any watch, and this just supplies the heart rate data and feed, and then Garmin's you know, analytical side of the training load or training effect and the aerobic impact as well as the anaerobic impact or Kuros is, you know, Kuros does the same aerobic and anaerobic, Sunto, same thing. So you can, you can use any watch you want for evaluating the intensity of the workout and you can use any watch you want for evaluating the intensity of your workouts over a period of time to see how your training is, is, is increasing or decreasing or whatever you want. So it serves as a great solution. So all in all, I really do like the Verity Sense. It is more accurate than the OH1 and it is a super high level accuracy that I wasn't expecting to be different from the OH1 and it has made a, for a great alternate solution to a chest strap. So with that, Fit Gear Hunter, thanks so much for watching.